You're listening to the Write Project Podcast and Radio Program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. Welcome to a very special episode of the Write Project Podcast. Today, we've got a host of authors on to answer one of the most frequent questions that's asked of any author. We're asking them, do you ever Google yourself? And today to answer, we have on Kelly Power, president of the Writers Alliance of Newfoundland and Labrador, as well as contributing author to Chillers from the Rock and What's Written in the Ladies. Have you Googled yourself? I haven't Googled myself since I have been writing or involved with the Writers' Alliance or anything like that. I remember Googling myself about 10 or 15 years ago because... Google was new? It was very early on. That's very early Google. It's very early on. And it might not have been Google. It might have been another search engine. It's, yeah, it's, but it I, could have been Bing. Quote, quote, unquote, Google. Yeah. That's when you know your brand's got power, when it becomes the verb. The verb, yes, yeah. exactly. It was, I'd been writing for the Gazette here at Mon doing the student column, and I had done a, um, an overseas exchange program for four months as well. And I don't know why, I just got it in my head. I was like, I wonder what happens when you type in my name, and, and went from there. And it turned out what came up was um, the columns I had written with a photo of myself where I look very saucy indeed. That's all photos of you. <laughs> there might be truth in that. It's all, all photos. It's like every photo is like, I'm going to F are the, you up. Yeah, the, you are the Barney Stinson <laughs> of taking saucy photographs. Like Just like there is no bad photo of him, there is no non-saucy photo of you. Every single picture. It's like when Chandler closes his eyes in every single picture. Yes. doesn't matter when, how. It's always a saucy face. So I found that, and then I found a uh, an intro to the research paper I did as part of this exchange program, which was essentially the email I had sent to the guy who asked for it, which meant that it was excruciatingly casual and not at all what I would have written had I understood that it was going to be posted to the website. So my my first and and only foray into looking up myself online was disastrous. teaching me to never go back again. Yeah. Yeah. Never go back. Some might say never look back. Yeah, some might say that. So never Google. We'll change the, the 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 thing to never Google yourself. Never Google yourself. Yeah. Never never Google yourself with safe search off. <laughs> you won't like the answers. I don't know what would come up if I looked up my name these days. I mean, there's a LinkedIn profile and there's stuff that has been on various websites, you know, with the Writers Alliance and Engine, for example. So I oh, imagine yeah. that uh, that might pop up somewhere. Kelly Power is not the most... I mean, like, Matthew LeDrew, you're getting me. Mm-hmm. Like, there's only three of me out there. The saving grace for me, if I were to want to be found, to put effort into being found, is that I have the second E in yes. my name. Yes, Which narrows it down a little bit. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Laura Lana Dunn, the superstar short story author who recently put out her first full novel, Ashes, which came out in June 2020 from Engine Books. Laura Lana Dunn, do you ever Google yourself? That's, that's a weirdly personal question. <laughs> What's wrong with you? It sounds so bad, doesn't it? It's, There's no yeah. way. To... I, I nearly spit out my coffee. Yeah. Wow. No. Uh, no, I don't think I have. Okay. Maybe. Oh, I think there. Um, so I recently joined the Writers Alliance of Newfoundland and Labrador, and I had submitted something to a publisher in Australia and they asked me for an author bio which only existed on the website for the Writers Alliance because I had to submit one to them probably a year and a half to two years ago. It also exists on the Engine Books website. Oh cool well wherever it exists. Yeah. I did I did Google myself to find an author bio so I could stick it into an email because I did not feel like rewriting it. I see. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. It's easier. Let's 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 just Laura Lana 
done. Yep, that is that is all you. There is just a lot of you. First result is you from our website. Second result is you from our website. Third and fourth results are your personal Facebook page. Uh, fifth result is an author page for you on Amazon. Perfect. Wow, okay. That is good. Oh my god. Image results for you are fun because a bunch of them are covers of the book. Uh, some are your bio photos, but the third most popular one is uh, a LinkedIn profile pictures, which looks like baby Lorelana. Oh yeah, that's an old one. Yeah, that is that is funny. Yeah, I don't use my full name for um, a lot of social media accounts. So if they're you know like private stuff where I'm putting up pictures of my kid or stuff like that, they're uh, they're secure and they don't have my actual name on them. Yep. So anything if you if you Google Laura Lana Dunn, you're probably just going to get something that's author related at this point. Yeah, and what's good that it's it's kind of like uh, Matt Ledru in that it's a unique enough combination of names that it's Google friendly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Um, like Ellen Curtis, for instance, uh, that's been the name of many, many people throughout history. So no matter how hard we try, like she'll, she'll end up on the first page of Google, but never the first couple of results. Whereas Matt LeDrew, it's, it's bam right away. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can see that. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Chelsea B author of London Calling and Christmas Mornings. Uh, do you Google yourself? I try not to. Why? What comes up? Because I just, I don't like seeing my Everybody own face. Everybody Google Chelsea B. right now. I just don't like seeing my own face. That's fair. And then my author picture comes up and I'm like, oh. Yeah, that's fair. That could be a better face. It could be worse, but it could be better. Yeah. Uh, a lot of photos of me before the beard come up. Yeah, those are hilarious. My boyfriend and I had a great time being... I was like, hey... He was like, oh, that's Matt's book when I was reading Cinder's. I was like, look at the picture. He was like, that's not Matt. I yeah. Was like, it is Matt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, poor, poor old no beardy Matt. Thank you very much. Next up, we have the author of Alligator and February, Lisa Moore. Lisa Moore, do you ever Google yourself? I have, yes. <laughs> do, I'm assuming you come up when you do it. Uh, I do in a couple of other Lisa Moores. Uh, there's lots of us. Um, one Lisa Moore uh, probably had to deal with, uh, you know, being questioned about a lot of uh, videotape uh, late charges <laughs> <laughs> at some point um at a certain place where until i cleared up my bill oh. um but uh yes i've done this i'm guilty as charged that question in and of itself like there is a certain this airs on mun radio on chmr there is a large segment of the people listening to this live at mun right now who won't know what a videotape late fee is <laughs> Well, it's when you <laughs> didn't bring the videotape back that you rented in order to watch a movie on your, whatever, yeah. VHS yeah. player. What is it called? What was it called? VHS tape play, VHS player. Yeah, I think that was it. Yes. Well, yeah. it was bad. It was yeah. like library books. You, you got fines. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have John Dobbin, best-selling author of The Starving. Uh, have you Googled yourself? I did at one point, not recently. I see. But I did at one point, and I found a guy with my name in New York, I think. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first name, John. Even if your last name's a little bit obscure, there's going to be another one. Same thing with Matthew. I mean, yeah. there's there's three of me out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not actually me, but yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. Oh, I, I had some funny experiences at the table at a con one year, and they, they people came up and said, See? Matt LeDrew, he wrote a novel! And they were, like, talking about this guy, Matt LeDrew. They, they couldn't believe he wrote a novel. I'm like, and let, I just let them go on, and I was like, You know, it's me, right? And they're like, No, we know him! And I'm like, You know a him. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You know a Matt LeDrew. Yeah. You don't know the Matt LeDrew. <laughs> This poor kid, he's about 10 years younger than me, and he must despise me because I scooped up all the good social media names. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. 
Next up, we have Morgan Murray, author. Currently, he has the book Dirty Birds with Breakwater Book. Uh, Morgan Murray, do you ever or have you ever Googled yourself? I, in, when I decided I was going to be a writer, I decided I, I needed a Google alert with my name in case, you know, they're talking about me in New Mexico and sure, I want to be notified. Sure. Um, but in, I don't know if this is just me or if everybody's life is like that. So I get an email once a week with all the mentions of Morgan Murray on the internet. And it's always, always, always like a B division girls volleyball tournament in North Carolina. <laughs> well, that's interesting because when I Googled you, uh, I Googled Morgan Murray author and yeah. what immediately comes up uh, now when I do it, because I'm signed into Google, so it knows I'm looking for you. Uh, but when I did it initially, uh, a few days ago, it came up with Murray Morgan, who is an is it, author. Like, it's the, spelled the same as you, but the first name and last name are switched. And he was uh, died in the year 2000, has like 30 books to his credit. And I'm like, oh man, that's no good. He's like a naturalist or something in, yeah. in the West Coast. Like yeah, he was a journalist Washington and State political activist and all that kind yeah. of stuff, yeah. Sounds like a good guy. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm cursed with two first names and two last names, so I've forever been called Murray Morgan or Morgan Murray or back and forth. And I worked with somebody for six years, and when I was leaving, I was like going around saying goodbye. He's like, it was nice to working with Mr. Murray. It's, it's been nice to know you. And he wasn't joking. Yeah. So, yeah. like, oh, my curse. Well, I grew up with uh, five other people named Matthew, because Matthew is just a curse of a name. Uh, if yeah. anyone's listening, don't name your kids Matthew, because <laughs> they won't go by their first name. So, uh, uh, My wife once asked me, uh, my partner once asked me, why everyone in my hometown calls me by my last name. And I'm like, because my first name is very common. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In where I am in Cape Breton now, I'm in a little uh, tiny town with everybody's from Scotland 300 years ago, uh, and everybody is named Angus MacDonald. Everybody. I see. And so everybody has nicknames, and they're very elaborate and amazing, so I'm scared to get a nickname here, but there's only one Morgan Murray so far, so I'm safe. You're safe for the moment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Amanda Labonte, author of the Call of the Sea and Supernatural Causes series. Uh, have you ever Googled yourself? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to, like you, I used to do journalism. So I, I did. I have. And I, I have since forever. Like since there's been available internet. Yeah. Um, but also, I'm fortunate that my name's not super common, so I am the first Amanda Labonte that pops up, and I always kind of have been. As I am one of the first Matthew Ledrews. Right. So yeah. there's, when, you, when you're when you blessed with, cursed with a, a name that, you know, not a lot of people have, you're, you're going to have that anyway. And I had a, like, I, I had journalism articles before, so, you know, I guess the other Amanda Labontes just aren't publishing, so they yeah. they don't have the bylines popping up on Google. Yeah. At least Fair. not in Canada, so. Yeah. yeah. It's I mean it's 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 fine. It's fun. Whatever. I don't do it every day. Maybe maybe what's happening is in other countries where there are Amanda Labantes, yep. they want it to sound cool and foreign, so they take off the accent and they call themselves like Mandy Labanti or something. No. 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 <laughs> no. No. They want to sound like foreign no. and Canadian and cool. No. No. No, Matt. <laughs> no. 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 No more. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Nicole Little. Nicole Little is an acclaimed short story author who has been featured in more than a half dozen titles just in the last year. She has been featured in Kitsora, The Autobiography, best-selling Dystopia from the Rock, Flights from the Rock, Monsters, Beyond, and Apocalypse, Apocalypse, 
Eerie Christmas, Love and Bad Romance. It's just a plethora of short story material. Currently, she is working on The Lotus Fountain, which is going to be one of the books included in, or novellas included in a big project from Engine Books that we can talk about now called Slipstreamers. Uh, Nicole Little, do you ever Google yourself? No. <laughs> oh. I don't think I have. You might now. I might do that now. Yeah. Not right not right at this moment, but I may do that tonight. Okay. No, I haven't. I don't think I have. Okay. I'm kind of afraid to now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Diana Brown, author of Saltwater Joys. Um, have you ever Googled yourself? Have I ever Googled myself? Have you ever typed into Google Diana Brown? Mm, only when I was looking for, because I, I wrote down, I Googled Saltwater Joys, mm. Diana Brown. Yeah behind it okay so cool. then it just popped up on amazon yeah cool yeah. yeah good thank you very much next on the line we have matthew daniels frequent contributor to the from the rock series as well as the author of the upcoming novel diary of knives uh matthew daniels have you ever googled yourself uh yes do you come yeah, up I, I, it turns out i'm a photographer in europe oh wow okay <laughs> Right. That's not me. Uh, <laughs> okay. All so, right. yeah, I did that. The first time I did that, it was just out of curiosity to find out, like, how many other people have my name. Yep. A That's lot. What I was looking for. This This was before I had anything written and published. Um, I think I've tried it a couple of years ago just to see if any of those stories that I published would uh, would come up. But, I mean, something on the scale of Google, you're not exactly going to be on the first search results if you've got a short story out of Norway and uh, <laughs> and, a, and a local a few local stories out of out of Mon. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to come up when there are a bunch of authors out there like uh, like McCaffrey and the big science fiction names and, uh, and so on. They're going to come up first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See. But it was it was something to do out of curiosity. Uh, now though, you are not a photographer. Now you are an ap- academic writer uh, who is an American. Oh wow! Mm, mm. He's born in New York, or you were. Huh. Mm. I see. I see. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Ellen Curtis, who serves on the Wannell board and is the author of the Infinity series from Engine Books, as well as the editor of the From the Rock anthology. Uh, have you Googled yourself? Not in a long time. Um, I do have a Google alert set up on myself from like a long, long time ago, but I just tend to not look at it before I delete the email. Uh, but a couple of times I've gotten some funny emails where it's like Ellen Curtis is like a person who does space travel and is commenting in this press interview and it's a common name it's not it's so that's what's interesting to me there's a few of you out there I mean not many though which is I mean Ellen is not that common a name are are you insane it's really not Ellen's a very common no name. it's not okay me i did it that out no yeah no <laughs> i mean you should look at the numbers it's not matthew level common oh no nothing's matthew level common like i don't think my name has ever been in the top 100 really yeah that's interesting i will look that up actually that's yeah that'd be interesting okay thank you very much Next on the line, we have Kayla Krantz, who's calling in from Detroit. Uh, She's originally from Houston. She writes the Rituals of the Night series. Kayla Krantz, do you ever Google yourself? I have a few times just to see if anybody's talking about my books, and I've actually found a couple of interesting articles. That's great. I found one where some people were saying they were talking about like new age television and somebody actually suggested my books to be made into tv shows i thought that made me feel pretty good yeah no that's amazing that's a great thing thank you very much next on the line we have brad dunn author of after dark vapors uh do you google yourself uh if i'm if i'm trying to find links to stuff i've written yes i see yeah thank you very much next on the line we have 
J.R.H. Lawless, author of the novel Always Greener. Jay, uh, have you ever Googled yourself? <laughs> yes. I see. I'm sorry to confess that yes, I have. Um, obviously, it's a bit different considering that obviously I went under a pen name. Uh, I guess, believe it or not, J.R.H. Lawless is not my birth name. And, um... That should make the results pretty clean, though. Like, I think I Google you. I usually yeah. Google the From the Rock authors, and yeah. it's it's pretty clean. Whereas, like, a lot of authors, you'll get some stuff that's other people with the same name. Well, obviously, when you choose a pen name, and I certainly did, you Google yourself before you decide on the name to make sure that, you know, other people don't already have the same name or anything too close. So that you sort of, you know, claim some, some you know, relatively clear real estate as far as the pen name is concerned. Yeah, that, that, that actually kind of reminds me of that joke from an early season of Friends where uh, Joey is trying to come up with a pen name, or, uh, you know, a, a, a pseudonym, hmm. and Chandler uh, convinces him to go with Joseph Stalin. <laughs> and he has no clue, so he just goes in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Mary Walsh, author of Crying for the Moon. Okay. Uh, here is one for you. Did you have you ever Googled yourself, or do you Google yourself? I don't very often, but when the, you know, occasionally I have, when I did my one-woman show, and when the book came out, I did, just to see if there was anything on there, any reviews or anything. I got very little in the way of reviews. Uh, I, you know, Joan Sullivan gave me a fabulous review, and I got a review in the Atlantic press and stuff. But I, it, it, nationally, I didn't get much in the way of reviews, um, which, you know, well, there you go. I mean, I guess people aren't that, there's not that much national coverage anyway of anything is there i mean there was only the globe mail and they're not national at all anymore and honestly you know. people who it's hard to get people to write reviews of thrillers it is yeah. genuinely difficult like people love to read them but yeah <laughs> to get people to sit up afterwards and write a review whether whether a, a lit fiction thing like the type of person who's attracted to lit fiction yeah they they are sit there like they're like, oh, I have read this, and now I have an opinion, and they want to share their opinion to be almost be I see, part I of see. the narrative. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like it is darn difficult to get people to write a review of a thriller, but you'll have to solace yourself that you'll sell a thousand times more copies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so no, I don't normally because, of course, uh, you know, uh, once upon a time I took upon myself when Harper was running again to do margs, my own margs, and then post them online. Yeah. And and then people were so, I mean, the great conservative hate machine, uh, you know, called me every kind of a big fat old whore that you could think of. And uh, it was just so shocking. I wasn't used to it because I don't, I'd never done anything. I mean, I came from an age before then. People would write to the CBC, I guess. And mostly the CBC didn't give us people who said mean things about us, right? Yeah. Like, mostly the producer dealt with it, I guess. I don't know. And maybe people, maybe writing a letter and sending it off to the CBC or to Salter Street Films takes more energy and thought, and not as many people did it. But it was quite shocking. And, you know, I I didn't do any more. It was uh, because, well, they kind of threat. they said they knew where I lived, and they, they kind of threatened me and my son. I, I, I was... I got frightened. Really. I would say. I'm ashamed to say that I was frightened, but I was. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that uh, at that point, I've changed in in recent years. I've you know evolved a little bit and gotten more interested. But uh, at the time that that was happening, I didn't have much interest in politics in general or Canadian politics in specific. So yeah. I didn't really have a dog in that race. But actually, right. it was their reaction to you that made me go, oh, I don't want any part of that. And then... Yeah. And, and like, it was honestly as as detrimental as it was to you in your personal life, and I'm sorry about that, I, I do think it actually helped in the way that you wanted it to help because it, it almost in, more, in a weird way because it's like... Uh, like their reaction to you and the vitriol that they said that was oh. my, that was when I learned that I was not on that team you know right 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 yes good good 
I was like, I want no part in anyone who thinks yeah. it's okay to say and do those things. I just yeah, 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 really, seriously. Yeah. But anyway, so that's why I don't spend much time looking myself up for fears. I'll run across those people again. That's fair. That's yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Sarah Thompson, who in February released her first book through Engine Books called The Love of Summer. Uh, Sarah Thompson, have you ever Googled yourself? Yes, many, many times. And not to do with writing, though. No? Well, no, I was a broadcaster for 15 years. So, like, if I was applying for a new job and things, I always had to Google to make sure that there was nothing weird out there that somebody was going to find. Um, the only thing that I ever found with you was that there was a Buffy the Vampire Slayer universe actress who was also named Sarah Thompson. There were, was, yeah. yeah. yeah well, I guess she, she still exists. Um, so it's actually very hard to Google me, yes. is what I've learned. Um, which is kind of neat in some ways, but... Uh, oh yeah, as a publisher, I love that. Like, it's it's good. Like, you've got to be real specific. you got to look for, like, my name in Newfoundland. Or something to that effect in order to find me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's kind of it's kind of good, I guess, in a way. keeps uh, keeps her from being too much concerned about what you're going to get on Google if you look for me. I suppose. I suppose. Thank you very much. Next up, we have BC Labeled, the Canadian independent author of the Tenth Lunan Regiment series a military sci-fi saga. He also writes an immersive dark fantasy series. His current titles include To Drown in Sand, Juris Lunance, To Drown in Ash, The Dog, Bone, and Upon a Wake of Flame. BC Labelt, do you ever Google yourself? Actually, yeah. Um, and not, I don't, I hope not, out of any sense of vanity. It's actually a decent litmus test of um, how how your brand is being publicly perceived. Um, it's the internet. This is a big thing with me, but the internet is, is a tool like anything else. Um, so for example, if you Google your name, you're going to find out which Russian sites are pirating your book. Absolutely. Which, which everybody freaks out about, but it's actually a mark of success. The first time I was pirated, I actually um, took a shot off uh, Goldschlager because it was like, God there, finally, um, I've been pirated. Okay, cool. <clears throat> because somebody... Am I allowed to swear on this? Nope. No. No. Somebody uh, cared enough. So somebody actually cared enough to uh, load in a copy of my work and then put it up for free. And what we know in 2019 is the more people that are watching your stuff for free, the more money you're making from the legitimate sources. So that's actually an awesome thing to, to see. The... The thing about Googling yourself is that you get to you get a, a, a tabletop zoomed out version of how somebody is going to look at you cold. So to me, that's invaluable because the images come up. You're going to see what your covers look like. You're going to see who, what website you're on. You're going to see how it pops up on Goodreads. All that is invaluable. And if I were to offer anybody advice, not that I'm an expert on it, um, I would say have at least one source one computer that you use DuckDuckGo on because the website the 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 web search that is result uh from using DuckDuckGo is completely different from google so it actually shows you a much more honest um search result and it can show you stuff you didn't know was there so like rather than amazon being your first top four hits <clears throat> you're actually going to find a blog that you did a bit on uh, through an interview from like five years ago that's still relevant. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, I do. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have author Shannon Green. Shannon Green is a gifted author with a talent for the strange and has been recognized in both the genre community and the contemporary literary community for his pursuits. In the past, he has been shortlisted for the 1996 Arts and Letters Award and has, has well won the 2015 Audience Choice Steampunk Newfoundland Showcase. Green has received praise for his stories The Wine Dark Sea in Chillers from the Rock as well as his stories in Fantasy from the Rock, Dystopia from the Rock, the Hamthology, and the just-released Flights from the Rock. Thank you for joining us, Shannon. Shannon, have you ever Googled yourself? Yes. Yes, I have. Do you come up? Not anymore. No. Right now, if you Google my name, you get a female soccer player. Ah, okay. Ah. Yeah, apparently, she's quite good. 
I okay. don't follow soccer. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.